Hi everybody, this is a quick video in response to several student questions about GIMP 2.10. I'm running, or I was running, 2.8, and I guess they made significant changes to the GIMP, or it would appear to um, new students that they made significant changes because it doesn't quite map up to my video. And what I thought I would do is go through I've installed GIMP 2.10 and I've looked at it and the changes really aren't that bad once you look at them and I'm going to talk a little bit about it. Now the first change, let's start up the GIMP. Here we go. This is 2.10 which has a different startup screen than 2.8 and one of the unfortunate changes that they made to 2.10 is they no longer distribute the scripts that allow you to do create logos which is the first program or the first project in a lot of my courses or at least in which is the first program in my GIMP beginner to advanced course so I brought up the GIMP and I went to file and I found create and sure enough here's logos and here are all the logo scripts and I went wow that's strange why am I getting these reports and it became obvious to me it's because I installed GIMP 2.8 first which had these scripts and then overlaid it with GIMP 2.10 so that's what I recommend you do if you want the create logos menu to appear now I'm gonna tell you right up front this really isn't all that helpful the reason that I put this project up first is because it was an easy way to get you to get familiar with the menus and with saving and so on not exactly you know that logos are uh, uh, important it's easy to make these in the GIMP without these scripts but if you want to have this show up what you do is you go to gimp.org so let's go there it lists, this is the easiest way to get this installed so it's going to talk about the uh, 2.10 installation but if I go to downloads and here I have previous versions of the installer and here is 2.8 I'm clicking on that so if I scroll down the latest version of 2.8 is 2.822 setup exec so if I click on that and I download it and start running that then what it will do is it will install 2.8 then I go and I install 2.10 and I'll end up with the create scripts <laughs> okay a little bit of a step now if you already installed 2.10 I suppose you could back install 2.8 and then put 2.10 over it but as I say it's not really very important to have this feature other than to complete the first project in my course now the other thing is that things look a little bit different in here and let me show you how you can make things look the same as the old GIMP we go up to edit good old edit preferences and within edit preferences one of the things we can do is we can set the interface theme now this may also be a legacy because I loaded a bunch of themes into 2.8 manually and I've got a lecture in my GIMP course on how to do that but uh, so I might have a bunch of themes because of that but it defaulted me to the dark theme and the standard theme is here we go default theme so if I pick the default theme you'll notice that everything becomes light and airy the way that it did before and I just click OK now I'm gonna say cancel because I'm gonna go with the darker theme I like that so if you can get your eyes attuned to darker instead of the lighter you'll actually end up liking this now the other thing to do is while we're in there let me I shouldn't have killed that I want to go back to preferences and notice icon theme now the icons here are different but if you scroll over them you'll find that they're the same functions as used to be in GIMP 2.8 I think they added a few more functions but basically they're the same functions so if I go to icon theme I can pick the theme of the icons that I want and one of them is legacy and that will get you the old icons if I click on that you'll get the icons that match the icons in the pre in the courses that I recorded so 
Click, click. You see, here's another solution to a problem that students have talked about is the icons are too small. So they're using it on a smaller device. Check this out. If I come down to icon resolution and I say custom icon resolution, now they get even smaller and I can use these tabs here to bring them to medium size, large, or huge. Here I can have huge icons. So if you're having a problem seeing the icons, go ahead and increase them to medium and large and huge. And once again, I'm going to cancel this. This is all accessible under Edit, Preferences, and the theme to get the color. In fact, let's change this to default. Okay, and the icons to legacy, so I have the legacy icons, and let's bring the size up just a little bit on this. So I want mm, large icons uh, up here. There we go. And I usually like this to be six icons wide. So there, that should look pretty much like my courses, and I think you'll be familiar with using this interface. And that's all I had to do was go into edit, preferences and themes and icon and icon theme and change those whoops i canceled <laughs> i wanted to save to show it to you one more time we go to edit preferences theme i'm going to pick default icon theme i'm going to pick legacy i'm going to go to custom icon size and i'm going to make it large and I'm going to say OK. There we go. Now I've got the GIMP looking pretty much the way that GIMP 2.8 looked. And I even have the Create Logos scripts because I overlaid 2.10 onto 2.8. Once again, this one isn't that important. You're going to be able to follow the rest of the course and do all the projects. Now, if there are other changes that come up that confuse you, be sure and get in touch with me. You can send a Udemy message. You can get in touch with me on my Facebook groups. Or you can contact me at b-r-i-a-n-j-j-a-x-n at gmail.com and I'll respond. So that's the changes in 2.10. Hopefully it won't be confusing for you now. I'll see you in the next lecture.